The following video is intended to give you a better understanding of how a bank statement works and in that way it may help you do your bank reconciliation. This bank statement in the upper left hand corner shows you the bank that it comes from and right below that the name of the company that it is for. On the right hand side at the top of the page it has some fairly useful information. First thing that it has is the time period that is covered. So this bank statement is covering the month of June from the 1st through the 30th. The balance of $9,447, that is the balance on June 1st. So that's the beginning balance. It then shows you all of the total of all the deposits that came in, the withdrawals that went out, the other debits and credits. And then it comes up to the new balance of 13000 and change. That is the ending balance on June 30th. If you look on the left hand side, kind of in the middle of the page, it has checks and other debits. Notice these checks are not listed down the left hand side in chronological order, but rather they go across the page. So you have 731 followed by 738, 739 back on the left, then 740 on the right. That's the order of this particular bank statement. And notice that there's some gaps in the sequence. It doesn't go 731, 32, 33, but rather 731, and then it skips to 738. What likely happened here is check number 731 was probably written during the month of May, but then whoever received that check simply failed to get it to the bank in time. Other checks, like 733 and 735, got to the bank and were cashed and processed and included on last month's statement. So there's the checks that are listed. Then if you move over to the next column that's titled deposits, these are a list of all the different deposits that were put in during the month and, and just to the right of that, the dates that those happened. Now these deposits are most often deposits that Pacific Furniture Company actually physically took to the bank, but there may also be some other activity going on in there. Uh, notice halfway down there's a couple things that say MS. We'll look at those in a minute. Then over on the far right, that's the balance, the running total as of each of those days, and that's probably the least important information on this bank statement for us right now. But you can see that the very last number on June 30th is the new balance that's listed at the top of the page. So let's go to the bottom third of the bank statement where it's showing all of the um, descriptions of the different codes that are, that may be found on this page. The error correction code EC, that's something that doesn't appear on this bank statement, but it's talking about um, different errors that the bank may have found out about and then it would code those so you can see those going either in or out. Uh, the miscellaneous one, in this case the MS's are only next to deposits and we don't necessarily know what those are simply by looking at the bank statement. The bank didn't know why those deposits were made but it knew that they were kind of weird. So it coded them as miscellaneous and they're hoping that you as an employee of the company know what those were for. The uh, next one is an NSF check, not sufficient funds, and you can see that there is one of these on this bank statement on the 28th of June, and the amount was $291.90. That NSF check uh, is something that you're going to have to deal with. On the right hand side of these codes there's an overdraft. Once again, no OD appears anywhere on this statement, so we don't have to worry about overdraft charges. There's no stop payments, the PS, the payment stopped, uh, no charges for that. And then the very last one is a service charge, the SC, and you can see that on June 30th there was a service charge of $34.40. Notice that the amounts that are listed on this bank statement, these are the amounts that the bank recorded the transaction for. So if, for example, check number 741, in the amount of $495.15. If really on your books it should have been $945 instead of $495, that is a mistake that then has to be dealt with on the bank reconciliation and potentially elsewhere. Uh, so this is simply telling you what the bank has recorded these transactions for. Hopefully this is helpful in understanding the bank statement and how it works. And that concludes this video.